is Sam Mehora. This past year has been difficult for many of us, but this is a time of year to be thankful for our blessings. And we look forward to a much better year, so I wish everyone season's greetings and a very happy new year. Thank you. When you spend your time digging through old records and photographs, you're bound to uncover a few things that are singularly odd. They're almost always so small that you could never build a whole talk or exhibit or article around them. And so they just stick there in your brain, tidbits of weird arcane knowledge that you can't stop thinking about. I'm Dakota Russell with the Heart Mountain Wyoming Foundation. And tonight, I'd like to offer you a glimpse into one corner of my own warped mind. Join me, if you will, for the night of the Camp Santa. For Nisei kids, as the children of immigrants, the holiday season often brought as much anxiety as it did anticipation. Christmas festivities were fun and exciting, but, could also highlight the ways Japanese American kids grew up different than their white classmates. It's a feeling that Heart Mountain Sentinel columnist Miwako Owana described in the paper's December 1942 issue. She also wrote in that column about her first visit with Santa Claus as a girl in pre-war California. Although she was nervous around him at first, she was soon relieved and overjoyed. The reason? She discovered that Santa not only knew, but could actually pronounce her name. Even within the barbed wire confines of Heart Mountain, there was Santa Claus. The government had a goal, after all, to pump these Nisei kids so full of American culture that there was no room for anything Japanese left. And someone had to distribute the thousands of Christmas gifts that poured in from churches and other groups all across the country. So of course there was Santa. The only thing is, he looked like this. The staff here at Heart Mountain refers to this jolly fellow with his gruesome frozen death mask of a face as Camp Santa. And when he reaches into his overstuffed bag, he always seems to pull out more questions than answers. For instance, who thought this was a good idea? Didn't he terrify the children? And most importantly, were these freaky Santa masks something that the camp's administrators insisted on? They knew that the men playing the role would almost all be Japanese Americans. Did they decide it was preferable to have Santa running around looking like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre if the only other option was to have him be something other than a white dude? I wish I could satisfy your curiosity and my own. All I can tell you is that each block in the camp received a Santa costume and a mask just like this one to be worn while presents were distributed at the mess hall Christmas parties. Block 14 is the only exception that I know of. There, Santa was portrayed by actor, latrine building boiler man, and all around bohemian Arthur Ishigo, who had a habit of wearing his beard down to his belly button. He could play the part au natural, making him the camp's only Japanese American Santa. Now, I know I'm overthinking this, it was the 1940s, after all, and things were different then. These Santa Claus masks, in fact, were common enough that you could still find them for sale on eBay, if for some reason you hate children. And I know that like everything else in camp, Christmas celebrations were buried in a tangle of bureaucratic red tape and last minute emergency decisions. Over in Idaho, 
at the Minidoka camp. The volunteers on the Christmas committee plan to make their own Santa suits, only to wind up sending two incarcerees on a mad dash into Twin Falls when Montgomery Ward delayed their fabric order. So maybe there's nothing sinister about Camp Santa. Maybe he's just born of necessity and the norms of a different era. But he still sticks in my crawl. I mean, it's enough to force these kids out of their homes and send them to concentration camps. Hauling their Christmases with this pasty-faced ghoul seems like taking things a step too far. Sometime back, I was visiting with Reynold Kagewada and his sister Jean, both of them former Heart Mountain incarcerees. And because my brain won't let it go, the conversation eventually came around to Camp Santa. There's a picture of us with him, Jean told me, at the Block 29 Christmas party. And I knew exactly the one she meant. It's the picture with the rows of kids holding ice cream cones, serenely staring at the camera while Camp Santa lurks dead center. I brought out a copy to show them. Ah, Reynolds said, pointing to the innocent young boy sitting on Camp Santa's lap. There I am. Now, as you can imagine, I had more than a few questions. What do you make of this, Santa? How did he feel? But I tried to restrain myself to let him remember the story in his own words. He stared at the photo for a long while, and then he said to me, I remember that ice cream tasted really good. To be clear, I'm the one missing the point here, not Reynold. When we talk about the magic of the holidays, we're talking mostly about the magic that we manufacture. This time of year is special because for a few weeks, we give ourselves permission to tune out all the things that worry us and keep us up at night and to focus instead on the people we love and the good in the world. That magic is enough to turn Camp Santa from whatever he is into a friend. That magic is the reason Christmas can exist at all in a place like Heart Mountain. I think that's a lesson we can learn from as we find new ways to celebrate in this strange and challenging year. On behalf of the staff and the leadership of the Heart Mountain Wyoming Foundation, I want to wish the very best of the season to you and yours. Happy holidays. Happy holidays, everyone. I'm Shirley Ann Higuchi, author of Setsuko's Secret and chair of the Heart Mountain Wyoming Foundation. I hope everyone has a fantastic and prosperous New Year's. Yukimine no chikaku semareru o yakata. Ryoken no kugurite o tsuru eda no yuki. Yuki bare ya. Hitonami Suzuku Kasekiten Shitatari no Shishaku Miyamaru O Tsurara Fune Koguya Yodami Nagaru Kan no Mizu Kutsunaru ya Seo Marumaru to Yukizukin Takadai ni Tateba Yuki yo no Kanbu no Hi Doko yara ni Sanmi no Narashi Yuki yo Michi Yuki Arashi, Maro Utsu Otono, Yomo Sugara Wakamizu ni Kiyomete, Awasu Tanagokoro Yuru Yakani, Noboru Kambu no Hatsu Kemuri <laughs>